Hello everybody and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another brand new video. This one is for the sim racing fans out there who love an abundance of horsepower. In a recent Toka Race Driver 3 episode, I took on a series called the Ultima Can-Am Tour. Now this wasn't an actual Can-Am spec car, this was a convertible road car built in 2001 by British manufacturer Ultima, but it was clearly a modern interpretation of a Can-Am car, inspired by the incredible series that took place throughout the 60s and 70s. And you know what? Do you know what? Let's just breathe. I have said those words three times now, so I better explain for those of you who aren't aware what Can-Am actually was. And if you don't know, then boy, you're in for a treat. The Canadian American Challenge Cup, or Can-Am, was a sports car racing series founded in 1966. The green flag sends 33 cars off for the first of the 1967 Can-Am series. Using Group 7 rocket ships, the drivers competed at iconic venues across Canada and America, hence the name. Many of the biggest names from across the globe were involved, both in terms of drivers and manufacturers. Mario Andretti, Dan Gurney, Phil Hill, John Surtees, the list goes on and on. Then you had the likes of McLaren, Lola, Chaparral and Porsche pushing the boundaries of what a Group 7 sports car could be, without any limitations in terms of engine size. The racing itself wasn't always the best. With open regulations, you can often find one car dominating and the field spreading out a lot, but the sound and the spectacle must have been absolutely magical. Now you can probably see why I was excited to try this in Toka Race Driver 3. However, it was a total mess. It honestly felt like someone had strapped a jet engine to a boat and sent it out of the pits. Even artificial intelligence couldn't handle it. Now it's worth noting at this stage that Toka Race Driver 3 is over 15 years old, so it's still a great game for its time, but unfortunately it really doesn't stack up well today and it really doesn't do the Can-Am name very much justice. It deserves better on this traction channel, so here we are. What about taking the best Can-Am car ever built to one of America's most challenging circuits and using modern gaming technology to bring it to life? There are plenty of impressive Can-Am mods in existence for the early days, but one car lies within Assetto Corsa's first official Porsche DLC pack that was so incredibly fast, it arguably triggered Can-Am's eventual demise. I am talking about the Porsche 917-30, the most powerful sports car racer ever built. This car was a development of the 917-10K, which had already won the Can-Am series in 1972, breaking a Mercedes-like period of domination by McLaren at the time. This new version, however, would completely change the game. It had a better aerodynamic platform, a longer wheelbase, but most importantly, an even more powerful engine, with this 12-cylinder twin-turbo 5.4-litre block producing an astonishing 1,100 brake horsepower in race trim. It was claimed that in qualifying trim, this number rose beyond 1,500. This car annihilated the competition in 73, so much so that it, along with the ongoing oil crisis, caused the SCCA to cap their engine and fuel regulations for 1974. These issues, as well as the North American recession at the time, brought an end to the series before the final race of 74 had even taken place. A revised Can-Am series with a new format did get up and running in 1977, but it was never quite the same. We all love to remember great race series and cars of the past, but nowadays, thanks to the magical world of racing games and simulation, we can experience this like never before. And here we are, on Assetto Corsa, in virtual reality, and I am actually sitting although not actually, in a Porsche 917 slash 30. Absolutely amazing. You can get this car as part of the Porsche DLC pack, the first one that's available, and this is obviously available on PlayStation 4, it's available on Xbox One, and it's also available, of course, on PC. So you can try this on pretty much anything, as long as you have a set of Corsa and you get yourself the first Porsche pack DLC. And you are also able to experience this. I am so excited. This car is mental. I've driven it once or twice before a long time ago, but never around Laguna Seca. It's going to be a bit of a small circuit for it, but yeah, I guess we'll see how we get on. We're going to be on fully default setup as well. Let's give it a bash. Now, I believe the version on Assetto Corsa is the race trim version of the car. So it's only 1,100 horsepower, not the 1,500 quality trim version. But that is plenty and enough for me to get around Laguna. Now, of course, we have early 70s technology, early 70s brakes, early 70s aero as well. You think about Formula 1 cars in the 70s, they really weren't that aerodynamic compared to what they are now. Yet we've got this massive lump of engine in the middle that has numbers that are beyond what we produce nowadays. So this car is going to be an absolute handful. And I can already feel it with the brakes and everything. You've obviously got that big spike of torque as we get underway, but you're having to brake so early because the brakes are pretty much not there. Again, we're going to have to go really slow through here. I'm locking up a bit, sliding on the way in. It sounds absolutely sensational. Where are we going to have to break for corkscrew? Really early. A little bit of bad healing and towing. 
I'm really not very good at that. Down through the corkscrew. Okay, nice and tidy so far. You can just feel as soon as you start edging a little bit more throttle on, the car just wants to kick out at you. Full bootful. Let's see what we can do. Look at the speed rise as well. It's absolutely insane. Looks like we've got a ghost car as well. Oh, I think I'm going to go in too deep here. No, just about get it stopped. Understeer like crazy on the entrance. The car won't rotate. It's just really not set up for it. A little bit too much power again. Out to the curb. In we go. Hit the apex on the inside. And again, you can just see the car's just washing out. We really don't have that mechanical grip mid-corner that you would expect from a modern car, but when you've got all that power in the straight, it really does make up for it. It's balancing the pedals everywhere. There's nowhere where you can take any liberties. A bit sideways out of there. You cannot try too hard to extract the lap time because honestly it will just bite back at you so you've really got to think through every single input, every single move. The aerodynamic package really isn't helping me much at low speeds. I think this kind of car would be a lot better suited to high speed circuits but Laguna Seca was one of the regular stopping points in the Can-Am calendar. They, they raced here every year from 1967 until 1973. It wasn't until the kind of, I guess, the, the end of, of the original Can-Am in 74 that they stopped coming to Laguna. And then they came back here again when it was reborn. I'm really getting that corkscrew wrong every time. So can you just imagine all the best drivers in the world fighting these machines around this circuit? Okay, so I've made a few changes. I've now got the pedal inputs down there for you, the lap times as well, now that we're kind of getting a little bit of an idea for it. And I've also put myself right up in the top right corner so I'm not blocking an unnecessary part of the screen. Now, I'm still trying to work out with this car how to get the lap time out of it. Do you have to be really careful? Do you have to be really brutal with it and aggressive? I guess we're going to find out. Right, let's set a wee banker lap and just see what kind of times we're doing. I've also turned the ghost off and I've turned the penalties off as well. Sorry, penalties on, I should say. Oh, that's not a good start, is it? Okay, that was a useless 129. Let's see if we can knock off a good few seconds. I'm going to break nice and early. Trying to do a bit of heel and toe, but finding it quite tricky with this car. On the throttle to get a bit of rotation. Oh, too much instantly. Just spun up the rears, so you've got to be really careful. You're already braking for turn two. That's the thing. You've got so little time to think between the corners because the acceleration's so strong. But you actually need to be braking earlier than usual for the corners because the brakes are so rubbish and you don't have the same downforce. So everything comes at you quicker and you have to prepare for it earlier so it's really is a double-edged sword it just means that you've got to be on full alert at all times and I'm sure there's huge amounts of lap time to be gained in you know technique and bravery under braking and all those things back on the brakes in we go now this just does Can-Am so much more justice than that Toka Race Driver 3 edition obviously the Ultima is a road car so it wasn't you know the, the actual road car was called the Ultima Can-Am as opposed to an actual Can-Am car but that was clearly where the inspiration came from, but a bit more aggressive on the turn in there. You, oh, I just, I'm so late on getting on the power because I just don't trust that the nose is going to actually get around the corner. Make it as wide as possible, chuck it in on the power. Bit of sideways action. All the way up the hill, we're fighting with it. This is a workout, this is. You'd probably be a lot quicker if you were to drive it with paddles, to be honest. You need a specific skill set to get the most out of the H-pattern. Oh, once again, just stepping out. So we'll see if this car can get away without the kind of rev matching in the braking zones. Oh my goodness, we pretty much took off there. Oh, look at that, the differences. A lot of cars nowadays have so much technology, electronic assistance and all that kind of stuff that obviously you have to drive them but extracting lap time is difficult but actually just getting them around the circuit is a lot easier because you're really just controlling a few different aspects whereas with this car everything's manual everything you know all of your inputs have a massive impact you've got to drive the car and the tires you've got to get the most out of the engine there's just no assistance with anything and it just creates like this completely different there we are locking up again a completely different driving experience that you just you need to be fully focused at all times and I just can't imagine how you know incredible these things must have been to race in we go watch the big curb on the power nice and early oh, back end tried to kill me but I survived again on the brakes early gone in too hot there missed the apex use a bit of throttle to bring it back round slightly up in our best but still not great second gear here Chuck it in. That's a good corner for this car. 
I think it's the higher speed. The, the aerodynamics definitely tend to lend themselves to that slightly higher speed. Corner again on the brakes to corkscrew. Just watching out to not lock up. Slightly better line through there though that time. Instantly get second because we don't want to spin the wheels up too much in the exit. Oh, every time through there. Wrestle with the car, back on the brakes over again. You're just so slow through the corners, it's unbelievable. This should be like the quickest thing in the world. You've got 2,000 brake horsepower per tonne in quality trim, I believe. And we're not quite there, but not far away. Oh, right, what's the time going to be? We're into the 23s, 123.7. With its technical and twisty nature, Laguna Seca didn't allow me to properly open up the taps. So before I let this monster of a Porsche lie, I thought I'd take it back home to Germany for one final blast. How would this legend of motorsport get on with the legend of motorsport, the Nordschleife? To find out, I set myself up with a race against the AI. Racing at the Nürburgring in this monster against the AI. It's going to be mental to say the least. We've got all the red lights on. Careful off the clutch. That's actually a very good start. So much wheel spin as you would imagine. I've got nowhere to go with my run though. I'm going to get sandwiched in. Now the AI are going to be very slow into this first hairpin. I can guarantee that. So we'll just get on the brakes. Oh, I'm sorry. Bit of a lock up and into the 90, but... I think we'll get away with it. I've turned damage off just in case there's any of contact. Oh, gone in a bit deep. I thought I'd be okay there, but again, just lacking that grip. I'm going to lose the position straight back. Watch the back end and exit. In we go. Oh, very close to the car in front. It's a really good looking car, actually. It's so unique. I love that about Can-Am. This is like the equivalent of a Le Mans prototype of the 70s, really. Oh, you had to lift through there. I think this is the endurance chicane, so not quite as tight, but in this car it'll feel like the slow, the slow chicane, trust me. Oh, a bit of power on the exit, down to first gear. And here we go then, onto the Nordschleife. Staying in first gear through these corners. Oh, unsettled over the curbs. And we remain in P11. Oh, almost taken off. Oh, the downforce isn't quite holding us on. It's going to lose us a bit of time. I can't even get it gathered. As soon as you make a mistake in this car, you've just had it. It's so difficult to gain your composure again. I'm just checking the mirrors, but I think I'm clear. Oh, another bit of takeoff. We'll go down to third gear for this left. Let some of that air push the car into the ground, and it's actually okay. It's the slow speed stuff, as I keep saying. Did you see that? Just in front, the AI car got proper sideways. It's great to see that they also aren't running any traction control or assists. Oh, he's got on the curb a bit. I just can't quite capitalise because I've got nowhere to go, really. Interestingly, it seems like the, the main place to overtake the AI is under brakes, which is the one thing that this car doesn't have any, so it's really tricky because you're really going to struggle to get them on corner exit, that's for sure. So we head down to Adnau Bridge. Make a move. There we go, get the car in. I'm just understeering, understeering, I can't keep it tight. But it's fine, we've got P10 as we head back up the hill. This is so much steeper in real life than it looks on a sim. It's like driving up a hill there. But we're up to P10. Sneak down the inside into P9. That was not a move I intended doing, but it kind of just turned into one. Slightly terrifying. Oh, over the bumps. Gonna change down to third gear for this corner. That felt about right. On the brakes again. Oh, I shouldn't have gone on the curbs. Oh, just about survive. Am I gonna survive the next one though? No, 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 no. Oh, that's an expensive repair built in real life. And oh, that that was an accident. I'm so sorry. Coming up now to what is undoubtedly the best part of the Nordschleife. It's just absolutely exceptional to drive it. Every single corner flows beautifully. There's banking. It's complete bliss. And it was actually pretty good in these cars. Oh, hello Porsche. I'm going to try and be polite. I 
just keep on getting up in the curbs and it does not like the big curbs. Oh, back end out again. Down to second gear. This is such a fast section. It maybe just feels slower because of how fast the car is in the straights, so the, the difference between the straights and the corners is I'm totally making a meal of that. The difference is so big that it makes it feel slower, but I think you're still carrying a decent amount of speed through these corners. Try and get a nice run onto the big straight to see what we can do in terms of speed. Okay, there we go, we're already in third gear, already in fourth before we'd even got under the banner. Now, I don't have a speedo on me, but... I'm pretty sure I'm going to be travelling at a very impressive rate of knots at this stage. The straight's almost over before you know it. We're in the slipstream. Now this last section is going to be absolutely frightening in terms of getting slowed down. We take the kink flat out. No, I couldn't quite. I had a slight lift and still struggling on the brakes. Avoid the bumps down to third. Bit of heel and toe down second and then first. And then we go. I still understeered. And that takes us to the end of our lap. Ah, oh, it's just... it's magical. I really, really urge you guys to give this a try if you've got a set of Corsa. You just need one DLC pack. As we make that move nice and easy into P9. One DLC pack, the first Porsche one, and, and you can try this for yourself. And it's, it's a proper experience. Not easy, but proper fun. So guys, that is going to bring to an end our CAD-AM adventure for today, but a massive thank you as always for watching. I absolutely love driving this Porsche 917-30, I've said that so many times now, around those two iconic circuits. It's just absolutely glorious and I thoroughly recommend you give it a go for yourself. If you want to keep up to date with all of the Traction content, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out www.traction.gg for all of your latest racing game news, reviews, updates and features. Until next time, keep it pinned and have a great day.